Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, the need for a new mum to have connection and support from other parents has been around since time began. And we've all heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, this is an African proverb that means that an entire community of people must interact with children for those children to have uh, experiences to grow in a safe and healthy environment. Well, for parents these days and everything that we've been going through, um, I guess it really does uh, strike a chord um, as many of our busy lives have meant that we've actually lost that sense of community and support. But um, parenting groups in Australia have actually been around and provided by city councils, by their maternal and child health nurses since the 1920s. But due to so social isolation and everything that we've been going through with COVID-19, this has all had to stop. And um, I think for any new parents at the moment, it is really quite difficult and our, our hearts definitely do bleed for these um, new parents at the moment, especially the first time parents. So this has actually meant um, with all of the, the, the sessions having to stop that new mums have had little support at the time in their lives when they um, when they actually needed the most and the village around them has not necessarily been there to help support them. So how to talk to us about this today, we're joined by our special guest, Belinda Joyce, a midwife and maternal child health nurse with over 20 years experiences. Now she's um, also a mother to four and author of this fantastic book that I'm going to hold up so you can actually see, Survive and Enjoy Your, your Baby. And her passion is in providing safe evidence-based um, information and advice to help parents find their own path to parenthood. Thank you so much for joining us today, Belinda. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Rach. Now, in your career of over 20 years, and that's an extended amount of time, and you've been um, a midwife and also a maternal child um, health nurse, you would have performed and would have seen countless consultations with families, with newborn babies, as well as facilitated uh, um, parent groups or mothers groups um, for various different um, mm -hmm. city councils. So I'd love to know, um, you know, what are the major changes that you've actually you've seen lately in the last um, couple months with everything that's happened with COVID-19 to what is considered like sort of normal and really what's been the major changes in your world lately? So the standard practice in Victoria is that anyone that has their first baby is invited, any parent is invited to a first time parent group um, while the baby's still quite young in the first few months of life and they get to meet a small group of other parents and it is predominantly mums who attend these groups because um, often their partners are at work um, at the time of the groups and it's a really great opportunity to make some friends and network and I guess just realise that other parents are doing this, um, this new thing, um, part of their life as well. Um, but at the moment, due to the social distancing rules, we've had to stop all groups, any face-to-face -face groups. Um, and in fact, we've stopped many of our face-to-face our -face consultations as well. Um, so it means that these new parents are just not getting the chance to meet others and to have that social connection. And also that um, opportunity to talk to a maternal child health nurse quite regularly or weekly, to ask questions, to get their baby weighed, those kind of things that they, they always do have so many questions each week because it's new. Um, so now um, some councils are delivering these online and quite a few councils are not doing any um, first time parent groups at the moment. <clears throat> so throughout your career, you've really seen, I guess, thousands of parents with newborns. Um, and that's sort of during you know, their, their childbirth education, their prenatal, labour birth, postnatal, and also um, the special care nursery as well. So you've really seen, um, you know, a wide range of um, sort of people th throughout your time. Um, so from your perspective, how are new mums feeling at this time? Um, and um, I guess with, with the reduced sort of um, access to new support and mothers groups? Yeah, so the, the mums are actually saying that they feel really distressed and anxious. Um, they're often having a really short time in hospital as well. So they're heading home quite quickly after having the baby. And so they're not getting a huge amount of support with feeding, especially with breastfeeding. 
um, just with seeing um, the midwives uh, throughout the day and then they're getting home and often the domiciliary midwives are not visiting the home. So often they're taking the baby back into the hospital a couple of days later to be weighed and to get a little bit of advice, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. Um, and they're not just um, getting contacted as quickly or being seen face to face by other um, I guess health professionals as well, like perhaps their obstetricians or a lactation consultant, um, those kind of things have all either reduced or gone to telehealth um, with very limited face-to-face. -face. So it's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. So what, what has some of the mothers been saying to you? I mean, um, from that perspective, I mean, it, naturally it's going to be sort of quite difficult for them. Has it, have many of them um, opened up to you at all? They have, and they've said things like, you know, uh, I, I just don't know where to go to help for help, and I don't know if my baby's normal. Um, and often they've been able to describe to me behaviours or feeding um, issues or some challenges that they've had that are very normal and that their baby's quite okay, but they just need that interaction to be able to talk about it and actually put their mind at ease. Um, or on the other hand, some of them have needed to be referred on to an actual specialist, perhaps a lactation consultant or to their GP or obstetrician um, for some medical help as well. Mm. So in your view, like, why do you think it's so important, I guess, for mums to have the support um, of a mother's group at, in general? I think it's an opportunity. Look, Group situations aren't for everyone, I'll acknowledge that for sure, um, but for so many it's an opportunity to get a little network around them of people who um, are going through a similar uh, time and having their first baby is such a, a, a special time but also a challenging time for many. Um, so they're surrounded by others who are going through the same um, feelings as well as some different feelings as well. Um, and just watching and seeing what the other babies do really helps to reassure you that your baby's normal because they're doing some of those things as well. Um, because when it's all new and different, it's really hard to know um, if your baby's okay and if you're okay, if it's, if it's all normal. Yeah. So, so how would you, I guess, sort of um, elaborate on the benefits in a mother attending a mother's group? How would you maybe sort of explain that to someone that maybe is expecting um, with their first child and has actually been to a mother's group before? Yeah. So one of the best benefits of a, of a parent group or a mother's group is actually meeting other parents or mothers. So actually making a bit of a support network um, because that support net, network could be around you for many years to come. Um, my oldest child's actually 22 and she still catches up with one of the girls from the <laughs> mother's group, um, which is amazing. Um, and they would never have met otherwise. Um, and I think for the parents, um, having that network of support around them, that's that virtual village, I guess, that I've been talking about. So it's the village that can support um, that mother and baby to grow strong. Um, parents really need others around them. We, we've been um, humans are social creatures. We really need that social connection. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I guess there's a, a lot of research now as well that really backs up for our mental health that we really need social connection. Um, and that's really the aim of the group rather than education. Although education is a really um, great part of it, it's only a small part of it. So with all the changes that we're living through at the moment then, do you think we'll possibly even see an increase in postnatal depression at all? Look, um, it's definitely increased people's uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression across the board. That's everybody. Um, and I think that's worldwide as well. So people who've never felt symptoms of anxiety are reporting feeling very anxious. I think most of us are starting to feel a lot better about that now that there's less cases yeah. of COVID-19 and that we're um, pulling together and um, things are starting to be relaxed just a little bit and getting slightly back to normal. Um, I know Panda, it's one of the peak bodies and mm -hmm. ha they have a 24 hour number. Um, I believe in a couple of different reports, I've seen that they've had a 20 to 50% increase in phone calls 
um, in the last month or so, which is huge. And um, it must be a real challenge for them to provide care for all of those new parents as well, or parents, um, because parenting is hard. And I think without that social connection, it makes it even harder. Mm -hmm. Um, well, so a lot of parents would have heard um, the term play groups. Um, could you maybe explain to us what the difference between a mother's group and a play group is? Yeah. So a mother's group is probably more about, or parent group, it's more about supporting the parents. Um, the babies are quite young, so they're still going to have some socialisation with the other children if it's face to face. Um, but it's, I guess it's quite limited because they're very young. Whereas a play group is can start from early on as well, but it's more about um, supporting the whole family. So it's more about the, the parents um, catching up and getting to know each other and supporting each other. But there's lots of play activities actually sort of planned out and um, organised for the children as well. Mm -hmm. And they can go all the way up until school age too. So with what's been happening lately, have um, naturally play groups and mothers groups have all been cancelled? Um, and stopped. And from your perspective, um, how do you feel the parents, um, I guess, at this time can be making some social connections? Um, and what is the likelihood of them being slowly integrated back into our day to day life? So we don't really know what's going to happen with group um, groups getting back together again out in public. Um, I think probably anything outdoors is going to start sooner than anything indoors. But I think the majority of first-time parents with their babies are trying to stay home and keep their babies in that isolated sort of environment for the moment. And certainly the paediatricians are also suggesting to do that when they're quite little. Um, even though it doesn't seem that babies and children are getting the more severe kind of disease, we still don't want them getting sick. We just we want to keep them protected. Um, so I have a feeling it's going to be quite a while before we can start up the regular face-to-face first-time parent groups and mothers groups again. Mm. Do you think there will be a lot of parents who actually, um, even when they are able to take their, their babies to mothers groups, maybe will, will choose not to for, for that reason? Yeah, I think it'll probably be a gradual, um, a gradual relaxation of the rules and then a gradual... Um, process of parents feeling safe to bring their babies back out again um, because even going out ourselves I think most people are being very careful with their hand hygiene and and thinking about where we're going and how close we're getting to people um, but to get together at a at an actual parents group face to face that's a whole nother thing um, and often they go for sort of at least an hour to two hours so that's a long time period as well to be in the same space um, at this point in time so I think um, I think we will all as a society gradually start to um, get back to what was normal so so what is the rules um, I guess with parents attending mothers groups do would, do they have to attend a mother's group or is it just something that is voluntary? It's voluntary. So in Victoria, it's offered to all first time parents um, and anyone who's had a second, third, fourth baby, they're more so encouraged to go into a play group sort of situation. Um, and that's because of that's where the funding's um, provided. Mm -hmm. um, but really it's voluntary and they, they can choose whether they'd like to come or not. I do always encourage it though because there are so many benefits mm. and we'll speak about that in, in a moment I've just got one, one question I would love love you to answer what happens when a mum possibly isn't enjoying a mother's group um, or isn't comfortable in the company of some of the other mums have you had that experience before and and what's your recommendation with that okay Anywhere that you get a group of people together, there can be some really challenging um, behaviours and there can be um, some, some parents who just don't quite gel with each other as well. And it just happens every, every now and then. And I'd usually encourage that mum to have a chat with her nurse and see if they can just get booked into the next group um, because it, it can be quite difficult and probably not that beneficial if they're feeling that way, you know, week in, week out. Mm. Um, 
In saying that, I guess no, no two babies, no two pregnancies are ever the same. Um, and you've mentioned that the funding is there for, um, the, for a first child. Um, but in your view, like, why would you see that a mum would need to attend a mother's group, I guess, for a second time? Look, a lot of mums really do want to come um, with a second or third child even occasionally, particularly if they've just shifted um, towns. So if they've moved to a new area or a new town and they're really wanting to get to know some of the other parents there, it can be quite hard when you're at home with a baby because you're not getting out and about and there's um, less opportunities to make those connections than if you were at work. Um, so that that's probably the main time that parents would like to do that. And look, some councils will find the space and do have the ability, um, but many don't. Mm, okay. Well, look, we published your article titled Giving New Parents a Virtual Village to Help Raise Their Baby. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Look, I just wanted to point out the things that new parents were missing out on, which we've talked a little bit about. Um, you know, not having access to those health professionals and not having access to their own parents in many cases either um, yeah. because their parents are perhaps over 60 and are in that um, more risky High risk. um, age. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, that's right. Um, and so not having the support and um, not knowing where to go for support and even when you do find the right health professional, then not being able to actually see them properly, it uh, must be very difficult to, to navigate the system at the moment. And even just simple things like websites not quite being updated, we can't stay up to date with everything because the rules keep changing and um, not knowing how to communicate out to the public what's yeah. going on <laughs> at the moment. This time definitely has shown um, us how much we do need technology. <laughs> and and so many people have actually said, thank goodness it's happened at a time like now when we, we do have, I guess, the technology and, and I guess the social sort of networking that we can sort of reach people, um, you know, it's sort of not even just obviously here, but around the world and friends and family everywhere, but because it would have been a lot harder naturally, you know, 10, and, 10 and or 20 And most of the ago. technologies, it's even free. So we yes. are, we're really, really lucky. Yeah, but it doesn't replace any face-to-face -face contact, which we know. So I'd love to know from your perspective, like what do you think new parents are missing out on with their mother's group um, sort of due to, to the lockdown? Look, they're, they're just missing out on that face-to-face -face with um, other parents and the face-to-face -face with their community. Um, that village that's meant to be supporting them. I'm so sorry, that's a bit noisy. Um, that village that's meant to be supporting them is, uh, it's just not there, it's absent at the moment. Um, and that's made it really, really difficult. Um, and I, I think for many parents, um, it's a tricky time anyway, having a first baby, but without that support and that, um, that, that village behind them, it's just making it harder. Mm. So tell us about this um, virtual mothers group that you started then. Look, I, I run a blog already and as you know, I've got my book and I just thought I've got the knowledge and I, I think I can pull the technology together and, and actually um, create a virtual village to support the new parents who have got nothing else. Um, and so that's what I've done. I've actually set up um, a weekly sort of mother's group where parents can just book in and um, come one week or um, come every week or just come when they're having a good day and their baby's not crying, you know, see what sort of fits in for them. Um, and I guess just trying to look at ways to support the community a little bit more, um, how else we can actually get this help out to parents. Mm -hmm. So what does a virtual mothers group actually look like? How does it work? Well, look, we're, we're actually using the Zoom platform because it's been really, really um, user friendly. Most people can connect to it. So people can just book in directly from my website at belindajoyce.com. If they just click on mothers groups, um, they'll see the link there to join up. And then I just send them out some emails that explain when the group's going to be on, um, how to connect, and, um, and then 
they just hop on. It doesn't matter if they're wearing their pyjamas. It doesn't matter <laughs> if they've got a crying baby. We have had a mum in her pyjamas. Um, dads are more than welcome as well as mums. Um, you can come for one or come for all. It, it's very informal so it's not something you have to sort of book in for and, and come every week and we do a little check-in with everyone at the beginning um, and also look to see if there's any really you know burning questions that parents are really hoping to have answered during that session so that I make sure I get to those uh, and then we talk about a topic that the group has chosen usually the week before so that could be something around sleep or around feeding around um, how to, how to play with their baby and, and looking at development. Um, and there's a huge amount of topics that we can kind of um, cover and discuss. Um, and then they can ask some more questions about that and check in with each other as well and have a chat. So it's not all about me just providing information. It's, it's about them actually making some connections and being able to answer each other's questions and share things that are working for them, um, share some of the challenges they're having because most new parents um, find that really reassuring to know that someone else is having trouble with their, you know, baby's not sleeping so well is a really common problem at that age. Um, and, and it's quite normal, but it is still nice to know you're not the only one who's up all night. Mm. And a great opportunity, like as we were saying before, even though in, in the coming sort of weeks that, that um, new, new parents will, will have the opportunity to attend parent groups and mothers groups, um, some may choose not to um, for their own reasons also. So it still gives them the opportunity to feel part um, and connected with other parents um, with, with babies at the same, um, same age. Um, so well done you and congratulations on that. I think it's, it's a wonderful um, initiative. Um, and so is this, um, I guess, for families nationally? Um, can parents, I guess, yes. all around Australia join? Yep, they absolutely can. So any parents around Australia are more than welcome. So long as you have a baby, um, that's really all you need. And um, even if you are going to or... Um, doing another sort of online parent group you're still welcome to come to mine that's absolutely fine and sometimes it's really good to have some different perspectives on um, becoming a parent and and the, the kind of questions you have it's great to get a few different um, uh, ideas about you know um, coping strategies and uh, things that can actually help along the way yeah, well, I think if we've learned anything from the last few months, it's definitely that we can use technology for good um, and it's really yes. there to enhance um, our lives on all levels. Um, and your group really gives new parents the opportunity to still share in like all of the, the usual conversations of tiredness and birthing stories and breastfeeding or not or choosing not to <laughs> um, and all the things that you would have heard a million times, I guess, and the opportunity to meet new friends and connect with them. Um, and I guess that's, what, as you mentioned before, it's, it's a very, very like a big part um, of the mother's group is actually sort of forming your own little village of friends that you sort of connected with. So I think it's a really innovative way uh, to facilitate the running of mother's groups. So congratulations. So if anyone wants to get involved, how, how can they do so? If you just head to BelindaJoyce.com, that's um, J-O-Y-C-E.com, um, and on the top right-hand corner, there's a little link to mother's groups. If you click on that, you'll get all of the information that you need. Wonderful. And we'll have all of those links in the show notes and also a link through to your article. Thanks again. Congratulations on, um, on launching the group. I think it's, as I mentioned before, a fantastic initiative and no doubt it's going to help lots of parents in the coming weeks and months and beyond. Thanks so much for your time, Belinda. We'll speak again soon. Take care. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye.